he is going to be, they call it one and a half gap. They don't call it two gap. And it's a little bit different than what the old school is. But basically, Jordan Davis is going to be asked in that type of system to engulf blockers and to open up things for the Kobe Dean, T.J. Edwards in the, in the back end, but also Hassan Reddick and Josh Sweat. Yep. So you can't double team Hassan Reddick and hopefully that explodes into this great defense. But the name I've used is Vita Bea. You got your Magamac Mac guys. Thank Tommy Lawler from EaglesBlitz.com. Hopping on, looking forward to talking to Brad Spielberger from uh, Pro Football Focus, contributes for OverTheCap.com as well. He's going to jump aboard about uh, 15 minutes from now. A uh, couple things I wanted to follow up on, JM, that uh, we talked about with Tommy Lawler, one of them being um, Jordan Davis at defensive tackle. I'm like you. My memory is is shot. Not as good as Tommy says. He's got a great ego memory. I remember enough, but uh, I can't remember back to last week for the guests we had on that we talked about with Jordan Davis. Yeah, I, I don't think it was Chris Landry, but it was someone that we had on that I thought made a very fair point. If Jordan Davis is going to live up to being the 13th pick in the draft, I think he's got Pro Bowl talent and, and will make Pro Bowls. I think he's that good a player. Um but he's going to have to be close to a three down player. Yeah, There's, that was Chris. That was definitely That was Chris. Chris. Okay, yeah. then I agree with Chris. Yeah. No defensive lineman plays every single snap except Aaron Donald and he's the unicorn and we put yeah. him off to the side and nobody is going to be Aaron Donald again anytime soon. But there were other defensive tackles that play 90% of the snaps. Yeah, 85% yeah. of the snaps. If he's going to live up to what his draft status says he's supposed to be, he's got to become that kind of guy. He can't be a guy who comes off the field every time you've got a passing down. If you get into second and and 13 because uh, you stop a guy in the backfield on, yeah. on first down, oh, get him off the field, it's a passing down. That's No, you don't use the 13th pick on a draft on someone like that. He's got to be a guy who's got to be more than a two-down uh, player per, uh, per per set of downs, not a hundred. Nobody's a hundred except Aaron Donald, but I do think he's got to be more than that. And I think he's capable of being that. Yeah. And, and you know, Chris is the one, and I wrote a story about it that jacobsports.com um, because of what Chris said. And by the way, I agree with Chris and it started getting me a little bit, you know, scared because he is right in the fact that, and that's what I was trying to get. I'm not trying to compare Jordan Davis and Derek Barnett as players. I'm just using expectation. There's a certain level of expectation when you're that high in the draft. And if you're not playing on third downs as a defensive tackle, you're never going to reach that expectation, no matter how dominant you are as, as a two down player. I, I agree with, with you with that, Jody. I agree with Chris. And that's why I'm starting to say, man, you know, and and Tommy just talked about, well, he's not going to be Jerry Ball. He's not going to be Gilbert Brown. He's not going to be Pat Williams, these two down sort of run stuffing two gap players. And I get it because of what he saw last year. And I can't prove this yet, but I've been saying it throughout the show and we'll see week one. I think, and I think very heavily that the Eagles are going to the Vic Fangio style defense. And I think the first indication of that was uh, the shifting of the coaching staff, the edge rushers work with Jeremiah Washburn last year. They were all together with the defensive tackles with Tracy Rocker. Now all the interior, they've split them up um, and the, the all ball linebackers linebackers work with Nick Rollis. That's a key signal. That is a key signal that they're shifting philosophy. And if they are shifting philosophy, he is going to be, they call it one and a half gap. They don't call it two gap. And it's a little bit different than what the old school is. But basically, Jordan Davis is going to be asked in that type of system 
to engulf blockers and to open up things for the Kobe Dean, TJ Edwards in the in the back end, but also Hassan Reddick and Josh Sweat. Yep. So you can't double team Hassan Reddick, and hopefully that explodes into this great defense. But the name I've used is Vita Bea. Like, I think that's what the Eagles want Jordan Davis to become. Would he be considered a success if he's Vita Bea? I would. Would be for me. You would. But let me let me ask you a question. I don't know if you can quickly look this up. If not, we'll get our buddy Brad Spielberger to comment on it when he joins us in less than 10 minutes. How many downs does Vita Vea play? What's the percentage? Because I, I know we're going back to what uh, uh, Chris said last uh, week. But, I'll, I'll um, look it up. That's, real and, quick. and I know just being on the field shouldn't count, but it does. Yeah, when you no, are talking about defensive linemen, how many downs the coaching staff had you on the field, snap in and snap out, does tell you a lot, and I think is a fair uh, way to interpret how well the player is playing and what the coaching staff thinks of him. Well, I'd I'm like glad... to know what Vita Bay to play uh, Vita Bay's percentage of snaps played is. I'm I'm I don't know the percentage, but I'm glad you brought that up, Jody. Because you mentioned, okay, Aaron Donald's a unicorn, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. 1,261 defensive snaps for Aaron Donald. 1,261. Number two at 1,000, dead on 1,000. Oh, so there's are, a drop off of 261 snaps from the first guy to the second yeah, guy. Who is Cameron Hayward. That truly who, is a unicorn. A thousand, and also God. Greg Gaines uh, from the Rams, 1,000. Uh, so they're both of the thousand. Vita Bea, six seventy. Yeah, so see, he's he's that's close to a two down play, and that's what I think he's going to play, Jody. That's what I think Jordan did. That's what I think they want Jordan did. And by the way, let me make this very clear because people are going to take this the wrong way. I think, and I've said this before, I think Jordan Davis is going to be their most impactful defensive addition, and. Tone just put up 56. So that's 56% of the snaps for Tampa for Vita, for Vita Bay. Bay. Yeah, that's, 56%. That's, that's and that's where I guy. think he that's where I think he's going to be. That's what I think they want. Will that be considered successful? I'm starting to wonder if the fan base will consider that successful. I I think there's this mentality. I talk about it all the time. I talk about it with Brandon. You know, sacks, 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 sacks. He's not here to get sacks. He's here to get Hassan Reddick sacks. But is that too esoteric? I don't know. I'm starting to think it is. It shouldn't be, but it may be. You know, I, hear, I hear where you're going. Um, point you made that I want to uh, see if you've uh, got the answer to this. I don't even know if you do. It might not even be a fair question. Um, the fact that they realigned their coaching staff and their meeting rooms with their defensive line this year tells you a little something, something without them ever getting out there as to what they want the defensive line to be and how they're going to deploy them and, and line them up and use them. What happens with two guys I want to ask you about? Milton Williams and Brandon Graham. Brandon Graham's a defensive end has been his entire career, but is a guy they'll absolutely swing inside and have him play defensive tackle on given plays. We think of him as a defensive end, but he plays a lot of DT. Last year, Milton Williams was drafted as a defensive tackle, but they had both uh, Hargrave and, and, and Fletcher already there, so they want to get him on the field. Defensive end, Brandon Graham goes down. Derek Barnett's not good enough. Well, why don't we move him outside a little bit? And they did that. Milton Williams played some defensive end last year. Do they have to attend both meetings? Do they go back and forth? Do no, they schedule yeah. one before uh, the other so the crossover guys can actually get involved yeah. in both meetings? I, I've asked about that specifically. Actually, I asked Hassan Reddick. I, I asked him. The, it was it was funny because Hassan was talking to us, and somebody asked him uh, something about a scheme, and he said, I can't talk about scheme. I, I can't talk about scheme. And then I was up next, and I said, well, I'm going to ask anyway, I said, Hassan, you know, what's your day look like? Are you working with Tracy Rocker or are you working with Nick Rollis? 
thinking, are, are you working with the defensive line coach or are you working with the linebackers coach? And then he probably slipped up. Gannon probably got mad at him. He said, no, I work with Jeremiah Washburn. And I'm like, what? But, but, but this, and since that point, we've gotten, you know, we've kind of bared down and they added this positional coach who was working with what Gannon calls the overhang players. So it's basically the defensive ends and the Sam linebackers, which are Hassan Reddick, uh, Patrick Johnson, and Kyron Johnson. Um, and then the Brandon Gramps, Josh Sweats, Derek Barnett's. They all work with Jeremiah Washburn. The interior guys, they work with Tracy Rocker. That's the Jordan Davis, Fletcher Cox's, um, Javon Hargrave, Milton Williams. And then you have the all-ball linebackers, working with Nick Rollis. Um, clear shift, clear shift in philosophy, which indicates they're doing something different. And that something different is Big Fangio and more Brandon Staley, to be honest. Brandon Staley's version of Big Fangio's defense. Um, that's what I think is going to happen. If I'm wrong, I'll show up after week one and say I'm wrong. But I think very heavily that's going to happen. And when I hear, you know, people like, um, and I'm not trying to say anything bad about Tommy, that's all they've seen. And they think Jordan Davis is going to play like Fletcher Cox or Javon Hargrave because that's what they saw last year. They didn't have Jordan Davis last year. They didn't have a player to do what they want to do with Big Bangio's defense. Now, will there be times they'll use a traditional four-man front? Yeah, sure. But in that instance, I think it's going to be Fletcher and Javon. They're really, really good. So getting back to your question about Milton Williams, Brandon Graham, and Brandon's already said this. He said he's acknowledged he's not going to play as much as he's used to. Um, they're kind of the odd men out right now. Milton Williams and 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 Brandon Graham from a from a rep standpoint, it's tremendous depth. It's a good problem to have. Um, how do you get everybody on the field? The answer is you can't. And certain guys are going to have to take a step back. At this stage of his career, probably not that big of a deal for Brandon. For a young player like Milton Williams, maybe it's not the best thing in the world. But bottom line is. Jordan Davis has got to be out there. Fletcher Cox has got to be out there. Javon Hargrave's got to be out there. You got a good fourth defensive tackle, but you know, you're talking maybe 20% of the reps, maybe. Right. And he is a guy you might be able to finagle an answer out of. If you try and get one out of Brandon Graham, Brandon's been there, done that too smart. He's not going to tell you if he's meeting with the inside guys or the outside guys. You might be able to sucker an answer out of Milt Williams. Oh, uh, Brandon's guess. already admitted it too, but because he had to, it's out there now. So Brandon has already admitted he works with Jeremiah Washburn because we asked that question as well because of what you brought up, Jody. Uh, he he plays both, right? He's yeah. he's picked inside. So we've asked him that question: Who are you working with? What do you do? Do you split your time? No, strictly with Washburn. So. You know, but they've so all said. We, so do we read into that? He'll be doing less shifting inside than he has in previous probably, years. Probably, I would, I would, and think about it. You got four guys. I mean, what do you need a fifth? Now injuries could obviously change all of this. And all of the players said at some point. Fletcher said this as well from the other end of the spectrum from working with Tracy Rocker. At some point will come together as a group as it gets closer uh, to the regular season and have meetings to sort of be on the same page. But right now for technique and fundamentals and all that stuff, they split the rooms for a reason. Um, and that reason is a defensive shift is coming and it's all because they were able to get Jordan Davis. Is the reason a and I shouldn't say the only reason, or maybe not even the number one reason, but a reason why Brandon Graham won't be moving inside uh, as much as he has gone in years gone by. Um, 
man, Derek Barnett's not going to force that. Uh, if Barnett were playing well with Josh Sweat, we got to get Brandon on the field. Let's give him a uh, couple uh, reps inside. Let's move him into time. No, Brandon Graham won't be forcing. Derek you know, here's Barnett. an interesting question that might upset people. Uh, if you're doing a prop, who gets more reps, Brandon Graham or Derek Barnett? That's an interesting question to me. That is an interesting question because I think they're going to default to Derek Barnett. I think that's going to upset people. Now, I think Brandon's a bet. Yeah, I think Brandon's a better player. I think Brandon will ultimately prove he's healthy enough and will usurp him. But I think to start because of his age, because of the injury, I think it's going to upset some people. If he is uh, healthy, which we don't know, and they, yeah. I saw a feature on him today, he's getting his work in, more power to him. He's really uh, pumped up to be ready for this season. Uh, if he is healthy and Derek Barnett plays as much as Brandon Graham, yeah, they've got some answers to give to an Eagle fan like Gertrude. No, that, that, that can't happen. That can't play itself out this year on the Eagles. 34, Jody. 34. 34 what? That's how old Brandon is. Coming off an Achilles. I, at 44, I'd rather see Brandon Graham out there <laughs> than Derek Barnett. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mac guys. Quickie timeout. Come back. Brad Spielberg from uh, Pro Football Focus and OverTheCap.com going to jump aboard with us here on Birds. <laughs> 